Welcome back to Collecting Cars. Now today is exciting for two reasons. One, we have a very special car coming to the platform. And two, 100% of the proceeds from a sale of that car will be going to three very worthy causes. The car in question is a 1935 Lancia Augusta March Tourer. The Augusta was built between 1933 and 1936, but it was in 1934 that the compact Lancia caught the eye of Freddie Richmond. Freddie had recently inherited the Goodwood estate and was also a partner in car dealer Kevil Davis and March. As well as car sales, the company produced a number of March specials based on chassis built by various coach builders, including Hillman, AC and Riley. When launched, the Augusta soon caught the attention of Freddie Richmond as a great base for a March special. The Augusta March Special Tourer is notable for its unique streamlined bodywork. The doors have been cut down, a curved boot lid with a vertical tail fin added, and then there's the beautiful extended rear wheel arches. The hood was also re-engineered to be stored out of sight behind the bench seat. In all, it is believed that just six examples of this car were ever built. Where better to bring this car then than its home here at Goodwood and meet with His Grace, the Duke of Richmond. We're round the back of Goodwood House now with His Grace, the Duke of Richmond. Your Grace, thank you ever so much for talking to us today. And it's wonderful to be here with you at Goodwood uh, with this Lancia, which your grandfather designed. Absolutely, no, he was a, he was a very uh, active and I think really good design. I mean, I think some of the best pre-war sports cars uh, you know, he designed some of the best pre-war sports cars in this country around that time. And is there a particular reason, do you think, just being familiar with some of the cars that he, that he did body, why in particular uh, the Lancia Augusta sort of appealed to him? Well, I think they were very, you know, they were very sort of high tech at the time. I mean, Lancia were absolutely at the absolute forefront of car design technically. And of course, they, they produced some very beautiful cars. Uh, as well, but they were very, very, very interesting and very, you know, he loved small, light, clever. Yeah. Um, you know, he was racing against Bentleys, huge yeah. Bentleys and his little MGs and things. So yes. that was absolutely what he was all into. So for him to take a Lancia Augusta and rebody it would be entirely appropriate. Yeah. And and his, his particular style was uh, very much, you know, we see these sort of extended arches over the car and this dorsal fin almost at the back. So it's very much those lightweight cars, but with, with, a, with a skew towards the aero efficiency. Absolutely, he went on to produce this a double scuttle on the dashboard, this sort of top that here that he produced, this, that was very much a look for him, and the slab, and that he created this as a slab tank on the back, the 1930s cars, uh, and AC he designed. So, he, he, and that became very, they, those features became very, very strong features of later British sports cars. So, yes, he loved aerodynamics, uh, he was a style, you know. He 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 was a stylist. He was a good stylist. He was a very good painter, photographer. He was he was a you know, artistic and, a, and an excellent designer, and of course a very good engineer. So the combination, I think, was a was a was a you know a good one. And did he ever did he ever race in one of these at all? He didn't race in last no. year, no. 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 Okay. He raced um, he raced Austin Sevens mostly in MGs uh, and most successful. He run you know he 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 was very successful. But he didn't race very much. Yeah. Apparently, a bit of a dim view of it, I think. <laughs> I'm sure he would love to have raced one of these. <laughs> he had a garage in Berkeley Square, a showroom in Berkeley Square called Kevil Davis in March, which he started when he left Bentley because he worked at Bentley for uh, quite a, a while, which was uh, very unusual. So he left Oxford, went to work for Bentley on the shop floor. Nobody knew really who he was or anything. And, um, and then WO picked him up and got him into the sales team. And then he started racing against Bentleys. And then he opened this uh, showroom in Berkeley Square and uh, that's where they sold these Lancias. So he sold these Lancias as he was, the, I think, the first Lancia dealer in, in, in England selling uh, you know, standard Lancias, and then he started being commissioned to make these special March bodies. Yeah. And March bodies appeared on Rileys, Woolseys, ACs, Lancias, and they're very, sort of not a dissimilar, not a dissimilar look. Yeah. And, um, uh, but you know, he always loved, he particularly loved Lancias. He did talk to me about it. I think Nuvolari drove him around Monaco in one of these. Oh, wow. Around the, around the circuit, actually. He, he was very impressed because he's apparently Nuvolari and didn't touch the clutch the whole way around. Uh. So he thought that was quite... <laughs> just crashed the box the whole, the whole way around. But he was a very good designer and good model maker, and he made lots of models 
uh, of uh, of the cars of the time. These little two-dimensional models. Here, little yeah. little company Hayes Muse, you know, right next to Berkeley Square, um, making these lovely little little cutout models. Some of which we've we've still got. And we've reproduced some. Yeah, amazing. And are, are there features um, on this car that you can sort of recognise on on the car that you have? It's the Bristol, isn't it? You, you, AC. AC. Yeah. Well, it was a bit. It, it's um, well, the, the, yeah. I mean, the look, the looks, the looks very similar. Um, the AC and and this is not is is. I mean, he, he perhaps went a bit further with the AC. It's got a it's got this slab tank on the back, as I mentioned, which became quite a strong feature of British sports cars afterwards. And then a very very particular, a very particular sort of design cube of his was this double scuttle. Yeah. So you're sitting, which is which is really nice, rather than just a straight yes uh, dash. You've got this sort of curved. Uh, scuttle, which is uh, absolutely lovely, and um, uh, there was a four-seater AC and a two and a two-seater. I got the two-seater one, which is slightly more attractive. It's a bit, it's a bit shorter. No, I think he was, you know, he he was producing pretty influential d designs for sports cars at the time, which went on and I think had quite a strong, um, you know, played quite a strong part in the way design developed yeah. after the war. And have you ever had a chance to drive one of these? At all? I have driven one of these. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He held a little hill climb at Goodwood, I think, in the in the in the um, sort of mid thirties. And after we after we decided to actually put on the festival speed, I rather amazingly discovered this in one of his albums. So there's a little picture of him driving one of these up the hill. Oh, amazing! Well, well just you wouldn't really know that's where anyway, that's where it was. And then I found in the safe this very, very sweet little trophy, this little silver horse with a lighter on it, actually. Um, and it says it was for him winning the Lancet Car Club hill climb at Goodwood. How wonderful. In 90, I think it was 36. Or anyway, maybe a bit earlier. Um, and um, uh, that was in one of these. And that's, that yeah. car still exists. Oh, fantastic. A little well, light blue one. And that very first festival of speed. Well, we retraced those steps actually, and 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 took and took the car up the up the hill yeah. earlier. So um, uh, we've got Absolutely. some great 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 footage of that in front of the house. It looks um, looks spectacular. Okay. No, and he would have, um, you know, he would have certainly be thrilled. I'm sure to see it see it uh, back here. See it back and, home, uh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. Well, that that was it really. We just you know, couldn't resist the opportunity to exactly. to, to bring it back home and and uh, and present it to you today and 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 just get some of those memories so it's a lovely thing i'm sure he'd be absolutely thrilled thank you very much thank you. thank you so before we take the car for a drive let's just have a quick look round at some of the features under the hood you'll see that the augusta has a 1.2 liter v4 engine and that's coupled to a four-speed manual gearbox the car has independent front suspension comprising concentric springs and oil-filled shock absorbers which represented the height of contemporary motoring at the time and it's that contemporary basis which most likely caught the eye of Freddie Richmond for him to use this as the base of the March Special. So with the Augusta, Freddie had the base for his car for these special March Tourers. But it was really the outside of the car where Freddie had the opportunity to stamp his trademark aero design. Elements which can be seen when you look at the back of the car with this curved boot lid, this dorsal fin which sticks out in the centre of the boot and of course the extended rear arches which flick up at the end. All of which not only added to the aesthetic of the car but its aerodynamic efficiency. One thing I absolutely love is just above these running boards here is a little step. So we've got the doors here which open up for those that are going to be in the front of the car but at the back not quite so easy to get in particularly if you've got this bar here. So look we've just got this step here jump onto that and then oh try not to get my brogue stuck in there there we go simple as that he says slightly out of breath now this car looks absolutely magnificent anywhere but stood here in front of Goodwood House it is positively resplendent and then we get to look at some of the more intricate details of the car below these beautiful arches we've got these black painted wire wheels with the two-eared knockoff hubs there and they're shooed with these gorgeous Avon Taurus tyres. The bonnet has this gorgeous curved design with these louvres running down the side and then we move this way and of course we've got these arches which move into a running board all the way over the back wheel to these lovely 
sweeping rear arches that point away at the end there. We've got a very upright windscreen here which can fold down so you can have that flat down there if weather allows. If not, it's fine, you can have it up as it is now with these wipers on here. Got these little side shields as well just to, when you've got all the wet weather gear on, you can have those just pointing out a little bit, stop a bit of uh, rain or wind coming in the car. Now the doors on the car are actually rear hinged so they open out suicide door styly. Close those up, we'll come back to the interior in a minute. Now, as I say, it does come with all the full wet weather gear, but what's really cool is if you pop this open and fold the seat forward, the hood of the car all folds neatly behind the seat there. So that's actually a really nice design feature of this car. Plenty of space in the back there for two or even three passengers. And then at the back here, if we just undo this, you just pull this lovely leather buckle open and just pull this open and you can see in there, you've got the spare tire just tucked away nicely. Right, I'll just close that up, jump in the front seat and take a look inside. Not too much of a tight squeeze there. Close myself in. Oh, that's very comfy. And actually, look, you've got your perfectly placed elbow there resting on the, on the door there. That's very nice. Right inside the Lancia Augusta March Tourer then, we've got an absolute plethora of dials out in front of me here. Water, petrol, turbo, oil, the speedometer, we've got a rev counter, we've got the amp meter there, and then this gorgeous clock with cathedral hands on it there. And below that, a little stopwatch there for any timing if we're doing any kind of tours or rallies. We could ask our team at Watch Collecting to tell us what kind of stopwatch that is. The rally theme continues over the passenger side of the car and you've actually got this little map reading light here. Absolutely love the typography of all these old Jaeger gauges. They just look so, so cool. Below the dash, we've got our manual four-speed gearbox, three pedals as you would expect, and then this whacking great handbrake here. Look, look at that almost feels like a hydraulic rally handbrake there that does this is a tour in every sense of the word because these seats are very comfortable you've got little space down the side to your right little cubbies there just to put anything you might want to have in the cabin with you and then there's ample space behind you for two even three passengers as i've mentioned before now it's an absolutely fine day here down at goodwood we've got a lovely spring sunshine and nice cool breeze so we've got all the wet weather gear off at the moment i'm just going to go out and take it for a little ride around the estate this is lovely this open top driving at its best at goodwood in an Augusta March Tourer. This is such a lovely consignment video to do because of the history of this car, but also because the fact that this is getting auctioned off on the platform and all the proceeds are going to charity. It's just wonderful that through all of our shared passion, some real good can be done as well. And, I get to drive this wonderful machine up the Goodwood Hill. Right, up the hill climb and past the flint wall we go. Now, former owner of this car was the editor of the motor, Douglas Burnell Bunny Tubbs who drove this very car in 1971 on the Motor Club Rally to Turin and the 1973 International Rally. So the car has certainly seen some appropriate action.
This is undoubtedly a unique opportunity to own a car with special provenance and in doing so help three very worthy charities. This car is now live on CollectingCars.com so go take a look at the full listing and have a bid. Thanks for watching and see you soon.